Live Radio. Hello there, folks, and thank you for listening to the show. I'm Joanna. I'm Nate, and this is Stranger Than. It has, uh, it's been a little while. It has been a little while. It was supposed to be less of a while, but then it ended up being... Shit happens, man. ...more yeah. of a while. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, both had much going on, but hey, we're here. Uh, we wanted to get more done. We wanted to do, like, you know, more stuff this month, but uh, we both got sick. Yes. And we did not get each other sick because we are in completely <laughs> different states. So it was just a big clusterfuck, but we're here and we're uh, not ill. Yeah. Yeah. It was some unfortunate timing. Yes. I've just had like one thing after another. You know, I've had like two surgeries like since we last recorded. Two surgeries since, uh, what was that? Two uh, surgeries that... Well, since October. October. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus. Yeah. I had no yeah. surgeries. Mm-hmm. Two surgeries, uh, some dental work that went wrong, uh, getting massively sick last week. I haven't been that sick since I had, like, COVID, like, two years ago. I might have actually had COVID last yeah. week, but who <laughs> it's knows? It's hard, hard to like, say these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, hey, what, 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 what would you know? I'm, I'm going back to the dentist uh, tomorrow, so yay, more fun. More fun with yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I just have not been able to catch a break, like, health-wise, for, like, the last, like, eight months. I've been sitting and thinking, I mean, it all started when I fell down the stairs, like, over Memorial Day weekend, <laughs> ten months ago. <laughs> and, and then from then there, it's just been from a there, hellacious. It has. I just haven't even, I have not caught a break. I have just had something, you know, all this shit going on surgeries dental shit sickness yeah it's just i'm i'm getting a little frustrated to be honest <laughs> like i've had yeah, enough yeah i mean enough that's, enough the, yeah enough is enough enough is a fucking enough dude yeah i mean we uh i moved bought a house and moved into it and then uh, i'm now engaged to be married and we are planning our wedding and so uh it'll be a busy few months but ultimately pretty uh pretty swell yeah, I mean, it's it's an awesome busy, but nonetheless, it's a lot of work, and, you know, many congratulations. I'm super, super excited for you guys. I'm super excited to come see you. Yeah, and uh, Joanna gets to, gets to come show up, and so that's lovely. Haven't yeah. seen each other in, P in person for quite some time. It has been a long time. So, uh, what kind of wackiness do you have to uh, kind of bring us into this episode, Joanna? Well, last episode we were, I was talking about how I kind of had a, like a, wanted to do like a recurring theme on like, you know, uh, people turning up dead in places that they shouldn't. So I'm going to kind of do a continuation on that. It's uh, out of a, it's out of Africa, so to speak. A um, <laughs> couple of stories. Sounds good. Yeah. So let's just get into it. So. Due to my recent illness, I uh, I lacked the motivation and time to write up like uh, a summary. So I'm basically just gonna read two articles on the two separate instances on it. So I apologize. Um, oh, that's all right. But you know, that's that's just how this is gonna go this time. That's just the way so, it is. <laughs> that's just the way it is. <laughs> So this first article is written by uh, Siavia Monsi, I'm going to say, and it was published October 27th, 2017, and it is out of uh, Cape Town, South Africa. It starts with the quotes, all we wanted was for him to get help, end quote. That sounds These ominous. Yes, <laughs> these are the words of a Kayamandi family in Stellenbosch who say a mystery surrounds discovery of their 61-year-old relative's body in the ceiling of an isolated area of the Stellenbosch hospital. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he had undergone surgery. Father of six, uh, Tatiki Gotsi, was found 13 days after he disappeared from his ward. He was admitted to the hospital on October 5th after he underwent abdominal surgery. 
The Western Cape Health Department said a nurse attending to him had gone to get clean linen, and then uh, Gansi had disappeared when she returned. He was found by workers doing renovations at the hospital last Friday. So, like, two weeks later, workers found him. (laughs) Uh, In the ceiling, no less. Kind of weird. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Just a spry old fella. (laughs) Yesterday, his brother Christmas, Kethwain, said he could not walk because of the operation they did on him. So, not so spry. It's a kind of a big mystery. Like, how the fuck did he get up into the ceiling? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you... Yeah, I mean, that's something else. His brother continued on, What has shocked us is the discovery of his body in the area where he was found after he had disappeared for almost two weeks. We have not gone to the hospital to determine exactly what happened. We have been asked to go to the hospital today at 8 a.m. to establish what happened and what's going to happen going forward. We are not happy. I don't blame the guy. I would yeah, no shit. not be happy either. No. We, <laughs> we don't know where to start because we were under the impression he was safe where he was. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, you assume your relative goes in for some surgery and they are going to be looked after and cared and they are not going to end up uh, dead in the ceiling. So, well, you know, yeah. In the ceiling, that's, yeah, weird. But, I mean, you don't necessarily expect that your loved one's going to come out of a hospital alive. I mean, that's sort of... Well, no, I mean, but, but you expect I mean, that people are going to at least try to make that happen. I right, mean, not, like... not <laughs> allow him to disappear into a ceiling or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen added that they were struggling with funds for uh, his brother's burial in the Eastern Cape. And he continues on saying, we received a phone call on October 7th asking if it, asking us if he was not here at home. We told them that he was at the hospital, but they said he was not there and that he had left. We then rushed to the hospital. One of the nurses said the last time she had seen him was around 5.15 a.m. We searched inside and outside the hospital. We then came back with the police the following day, but we found nothing. Now, well, the department has launched an investigation into how Gansi ended up in the ceiling, uh, Keth Wayne said, quote, all we want for the hospital is to take responsibility. He was under their care when he died. All we want was for him to get help. They must contribute to his burial, end quote. Provincial health spokesperson Mark van der Heerver said hospital management has been in contact with the family and would meet them when the autopsy results were available. Quote, the department convey, conveys its heartfelt condolences to the family of the deceased and extends our trauma and counseling services to them during this difficult time. The family can discuss any other concern or challenge they may have with the hospital management. End quote. End article. Yeah, very bureaucratic uh, response there. <laughs> right? Wasn't I was not able to find really anything more on uh, what the outcome was, on what they determined to be the cause of death. Uh, yeah, very, very strange. But as if that's not strange enough, guess what? It fucking happened again, like two years later. Same hospital? Uh, not the same hospital, but uh, same region. That. And this guy, this guy had a broken leg and then was found dead in the ceiling. So two people who would not have been, you know, shouldn't have been able to, like, get up and ambulate, much less climb into the ceiling ended up being found dead in the hospital ceiling. Some people are dubbing this as the South African ceiling stuffer, thinking, like, there might be somebody, like, going to hospitals and killing people and putting them in the ceiling. But, you know, how dead weight is hard to fucking move. And it is. And to get just, like, a corpse into a ceiling. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they're not found mutilated, right? No. Just dead, as far as I can tell. I mean, yeah, it's it's very, very strange. Yeah, it's fucking weird as shit. (laughs) It is weird as shit. So let me let me read you the article on the second occurrence. All right. So this one is dated May 30th, 2019. So a little bit less than two years after the first occurrence. And this is by uh, 
Nelisewi Misomi and uh, the Kisia team. How did an otherwise healthy man with a broken leg end up dead in a hospital ceiling? Hmm. That's an excellent question. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> God, this article, the way it starts. In the end, it was the smell that gave it away. Yikes. Yeah, it's, that's frequent, I think. Yeah, I mean, that happens. Sandile Sabia had come to Durban's Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Hospital with a broken femur on the 10th of May. But days later, and as Sabia was set to be transferred to the nearby Addington Hospital to see an orthopedic doctor, the man from Amatoti was nowhere to be found. Security staff scoured the hospital grounds, said the KwaZulu Natal Health Department this week. With nowhere else to look, it seemed, staff opened a missing persons case to the South African Police Department. Quote, an unbearable stench intensified at the hospital, <laughs> said the uh, newly appointed KZN Health um, Nemagugu Similane <laughs> Zulu said in what is one of her first statements as uh, the new, like, whatever health MEC. I don't know what MEC stands for, but that's, that, that's her job title. Quote, Eventually, it led to the storeroom where fluid dripping from the ceiling provided the telltale signs that something was amiss. The search eventually led to the decomposed body, end quote. <laughs> Although initial media reports claimed that Sabia was a mental health patient at the hospital, the health department says this is untrue. Now the race is on to find out why an otherwise healthy man, a builder no less, with a broken leg, would end up dead among the ceiling panels of the seaside hospital. It was a grim welcome to her new position for Simulane Zulu, <laughs> just a week on the job. <laughs> oh, a week on the job, and then this is what happens. You got this uh, Second, clusterfuck yeah. to deal with. I know, good, good second first in two week. years. State Forensic Services will be performing an autopsy on the body before delivering a port to his family. Meanwhile, the health department expects to release its preliminary findings on the incident Friday. The police have also opened a docket in relation to the case. While the mystery around the discovery continues to swirl, the KZN Health Department insists that its hospitals have tight security measures in place with a security guard in every unit. For instance, runaway patients, it argues, would only go unnoticed if they were to slip into normal clothes during busy visiting hours. But a 2016-17 report from the Health Oversight Body, the Office of Health Standards Compliance, the OHFC, found that provisional hospitals or provincial hospitals in the KwaZulu Natal only met half of its state its safety and security standards for the health facilities. Mahatma Gandhi Memorial Hospital, however, was not among those facilities surveyed as part of the report. The report also found that a number of hospitals and clinics did not have a security policy in place and that often there was no record of how, a, how security incidents were resolved. Strangely enough, Sabia is at least the second patient to be found dead and among the rafters in a South African public hospital in the last two years. In 2017, IOL reported that a 61-year-old 60, Tatiki Gutsi was found dead in a, the Stellenbach hospital. At the time, Gutsi's family said it was unlikely that the man had even been able to walk unsupported at the time. Quote, he disappeared under their own guard and was subsequently found in their facility in an area he could not have accessed by himself, end quote, his family told IOL. Quote, all we wanted was for him to get help, which was, you know, what they had said in the previous original article <laughs> right after the incident. Yes. Generally so, speaking, that's why you take people to the hospitals because you yes, want for them to get help. Yes. So a man who a 61 year old man who had abdominal surgery and should not have been able to ambulate without assistance. And then a man with a broken femur. Um, yeah, both disappear from their hospital rooms and are subsequently found in the ceiling panels of said hospital. That's fucking weird. It is fucking weird. Now, there's some, like, sites out there that have these two stories listed and say, like, maybe this is a case of, like, teleportation. Uh, 
you know, he's could be. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, is there some kind of? I mean, who knows? Like, is there some kind of weird rift in the space time continuum in uh, South Africa that like would cause like for uh, you know someone to just suddenly disappear and then reappear in the ceiling? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, but they. They're not found like fused with the ceiling. It's not I like know, Philadelphia experience exp- uh, uh, shit. So Philadelphia experiment. I'm also thinking of that one X Files. Remember that one where he switches bodies with the guy? I don't remember that one. Yeah, well, I mean, they were out on like uh, they're out in like Area 51, and then like there's that weird like you know some like weird like you know thing uh thing like some like it comes like a wave you know and just like fucks everything up it's oh switched. actually i do i think i do yeah. remember that one actually yeah there was like the air force pilot that got swapped bodies with like the navajo woman and then there yeah, was like the one dude yeah. who got like fused with like the rocks or something like i it totally was... remember that one uh-huh yeah so i don't know like yeah they didn't find them like fused to anything and then I couldn't find anything like those were the the two most comprehensive articles I could find. But none of them on, said anything about like how did this. I mean, right, besides like, being dead, the, like what state they were found in. Right, and like what co- what the cause of death like officially was. Like, did they dehydrate to death like up there? Did were they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, like nothing. It's just like ah, oh, we found dead bodies, and and there that's it. Yeah, and it is odd because, I mean, like you said, dead weight's really hard to move, so, I mean, I, it seems odd, but, I mean, they, they had to have gotten up there somehow. And especially and the seems... dude that's had the abdominal surgery, like, you'd think yeah. if you were, like, dragging some corpse up there, it would open up the stitches and there'd be some sort of blood or something somewhere. I mean, maybe there was, and it just failed to It just did the articles it. didn't, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Well, I you mean, should, they said uh, they were doing renovations, but it could be like, what's that giant stain on the ceiling? <laughs> like, they just happen to be in the room, right. and they're like, hmm. Is that a black and, mold? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a dead guy. Yeah, and then in the other one, it was like, they smelled it, and they smelled the, the, the smell coming from the ceiling tiles. So Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, either... Either they teleported up there or somebody put them up there because uh, I don't think they put themselves up there. I don't think either one of them was in a state to where they could like get up into the ceiling unassisted. So, I mean, yeah, probably not <laughs> with a broken, they said broken femur, broken femur. Yeah, yeah that's you're not moving. No, like, without being in extreme agony with a broken fucking femur. That's. Isn't the femur, like, the biggest bone in your body or something? Yeah, that's your thigh bone. Yeah, that's a big old fucking... That's something where usually, like, you're, like, in traction for something like that. You're all you're all casted up, and you know, and probably got one of those, like, you know, little triangle hangy thingies that your leg's, like, sitting there, like, elevated in, and... Yeah. It's... Yeah, that's just it's it's a weird one. This is a and then abdominal weird, weird surgery. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you cut into your I mean into your abdomen. That's you're cut. You're severing muscles there. That uh-huh. your core muscles. They, they call it your core for a reason. Right. So, so. fresh. I mean, fuck that. Fresh out of surgery. Yeah, you're not getting up anywhere. Yeah, that's something serious. Mm-hmm. Although the one with the abdominal surgery, I mean, I get that like obviously something uh strange and uh not you know out of the ordinary occurred but the hospital's just like yeah he must have gone home (laughs) (laughs) well i mean it's i guess probably you this happened in in south africa yes yeah i'm sure that the the laws and what have you are different i'm sure it's somewhat frequent for people who just to be like all right well i'm going home like fuck this and like head home like yeah, I, people I can are just see like that a as being more hardcore than they are up here. <laughs> well, I mean, also there's probably a fewer laws prohibiting that. Like, if someone were to just leave a hospital here, doesn't that make the hospital liable for the person? No, not if you. Uh, they make like you like you sign bail? a paper, basically. Like you're leaving against medical advice. You're leaving right, AMA, but, if, but if you, you just still, bail. you can still bail. They can't legal. I mean, legally, we can't 
you know, keep you in hospital because that's like holding you prisoner, basically. Right, like, right. So unless like there is some sort of like, you know, like, you know, you're being put on a hold, like a legal like cycle or something like or that. Something like that. Yeah, there's some legal reason that we can hold you there and, and keep you from leaving. Like nobody can stop you if you want to fucking go like you can fucking you can go. go you can fucking go but well just you just they just have to be made aware it's like okay well you're leaving against medical advice so like if something happens to you because you left the hospital uh that's on you that's not our fault but yeah it's i mean it's just strange because he should not have been able to like get up and and walk around and so just the idea that they're like oh i guess he must have just went home it's like how the fuck did he go home please you know seriously (laughs) (laughs) so i do have a third article about like uh some deaths under mysterious circumstances but if you would like to um you know Tell everyone what you got. And well, I've got uh, I've got some things to talk about. So, do you do you know what Mo- you you know what Monty Python is, right? Oh yes. Yeah. Well, this is a. Uh, I mean these these parrots in this article they are not dead. They're okay. not dead at all. They are quite alive, and. They are dirty mouth little bastards. So uh, at, at the Lincolnshire Wildlife Park in Frisney, England, there are like eight um, African gray parrots that just curse. That's all they do is they just curse. I mean, nothing too exotic, but they're all like your standard curse words. All of your standard curse words. They they just kind of shout those things. Um, their names, the five of them, were donated to the place like at the early uh, early days of COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy, Elsie, Eric, Jade, and Tyson are their names. Um, I'm not sure why the other three, because they say in the article that eight are cursing, but they only named five, so I don't know if these five taught three more to curse. Um, but for a while there, they were just kind of kept away from the public because all they did was curse. Because fucking mouths. <laughs> I mean, all they did was curse. So um, they had to end up, I mean, they, they did have to end up having them, like, a little exhibit with a minute or whatever, but they just had a sign saying that, like, you know, don't bring your kids here because these fuckers curse a lot. I guess there was some video like a that was done by somebody it was some guy and he was close to the parrots and the parrots were cursing up a storm but he couldn't move away because they had set up the camera already there and it would take too much time to reset up all the camera and sound equipment so there's just these fucking birds cursing in the background um, <laughs> it was yeah it was on it was for a tv segment uh but yeah they're they just uh they've got cursing birds and they're trying to figure out how to make it so they don't curse. And so what they are going to do is they're going to put these cursing birds into a bigger flock of birds and hope that they learn some other words. Um, <laughs> but I think it would be funnier if they ended up ta- teaching like this other flock of giant fucking bir- uh, or this giant flock of birds to start swearing. Now, that would the be people, awesome. I know, right? Uh, now, the people who donated it, it was, I guess it was a woman who brought in the birds to be donated. And she was like, they were cursing up a storm. And she was like, oh, yeah, my husband, he taught them all of these curse words. Now, the thing about these particular parrots is that they, they talk, but they, they imitate really well. Mm-hmm. And some of these curse words were in her voice. <laughs> Caught. <laughs> so, Busted. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's... That's pretty much it. It's just that um, they got a whole bunch of cursing birds at this <laughs> at this place. Sounds like what I mean. If I had birds, which I would never have because I hate birds, but if I did have birds, I can guarantee you they would be you know foul mouthed little fuckers. That is for sure. I really do hope that they just teach that big group of birds like, and they just be like, you know, you know, all you hear is just like fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, I know. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> it would be hilarious, 
absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Just at this like zoo, and then you know, it's just tons of cursing birds. Apparently, everyone thinks it's hilarious. Apparently, yeah. like like the people who go there are just like this. Now this is comedy. Yes. I, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. It's not just a British thing. It's a human thing. It is. I would, I would love to go there and visit these cursing birds. That sounds yeah, me too. fucking fantastic. Absolutely you know, my, it does. <laughs> my son uh, had a friend who had a parrot, and it did all sorts of like weird uh, imitation noises. And one of them was like the sound that it makes when you open up like a can of soda or a beer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, it could like do it like perfectly. It was weird. That's crazy. Yeah, it's their abilities to mimic are terrifying. I know. Birds it's, are creepy. Yeah, but you know, all kinds of uh, all kinds of animals are a lot more intelligent I think than we give them credit for. I mean, Absolutely. you see all of these, I mean, you may have seen the videos of like the dogs who are punching these Oh yeah, like, the, the bitch the bitch button dog. Oh well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that one specifically. But there's tons that. I mean, they they talk. I mean, they and one that I saw a video of was some woman I think in San Diego, and the low the the college around there is watching her dog because it's like very good at this thing. And one day, the dog told her through the buttons that it was sad, and she asked why, and the dog said because its paw hurt. You know, through you know, mm -hmm. ouch ouch you know is one of the things and like well where does it mm -hmm. hurt and like paw and sure as fucking shit the dog had like a little splinter or something in the paw <laughs> so, so that's my daughter like crazy is obs <laughs> she's obsessed with these tiktok videos of a dog that also does it but one of the buttons is uh bitch and and it'll be like the dog will be like food bitch bitch now food bitch like bitch bitch that's hilarious. you know yeah so like every other word is like you know bitch but it's also like asking for like different things like you know toy bitch <laughs> right right food bitch 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 yep it, it loves the bitch button i think that a lot of those things might be really easy to to fake you know mm-hmm not that I'm saying that one is necessarily, but I just, it's like, it'd be a fairly easy thing to actually like to fake because you would just put a electronic voice into the video and that's, mm -hmm. that's all you have to do. Yeah. And all you really have to do is show the dog like hitting the button and then like superimpose the voice over it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, but, but I mean, nevertheless, there is like, like provable ones that do that and it's fucking crazy. Mm hmm. Yep. Animals are smart. And yeah, I think that, yeah, I think they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Oh, not all my of them. Dog them are is, fucking stupid. My dog is super smart, only about, like, doing bad things, but, like, right. figuring out how to, like, get into things. Super fucking smart. It's he like, knows how, how to, like, you... open the gate. Like, just, he can do it in, like, three seconds. And it's, you know, the typical, like, you know, you push down and it, like, you know, lets up the lever so that you can, like, you know, pull the gate open. And it's... From his side, from the inside of the gate, you have to, like, pull it open. So I would have thought that that would have prevented it. But no, he just stands at the gate, and he uses one paw to push the lever down. And then while it's pushed down, he takes his other paw and, and you know, kind of curves it over the top of the fence and then pulls in until, you know, and gets the fence. So he's out of the, he's out of the fence into the driveway in, like, three fucking seconds. <sighs> Fortunately, he has mastered the recall, so I can hear him opening the gate, and I go out and yell at him to come back, and he does. He doesn't. He no longer humiliates me by running into the road, making people That's stop uh, to prevent from hitting him, and then they'll be like, oh, what's going on with this dog? And they'll open up their car door, and he'll just jump in. I've had to, like, get him from other people's houses, like, twice now, because somebody, like, <laughs> will post on the face. I had to become part of, like, the Lost Dogs of Topeka Facebook group, because... He would just run off and then he would like run into traffic and people would stop. You know, fortunately, people would stop and then he would like get into their cars and just be like, hey, yo, let's go. And so, yeah, two different times people posted and I had to be like, yes, that's my dog. Like, what's your so address? Sorry. I'll come and pick him up. Thank you so much. <laughs> and like, you know, get him in my car. It's like, you fucking humiliated me, you know? Like, what the shit are you doing? I know. Don't get into strange me... cars. <sighs> Well, that is just like, okay, like, great, thank you. Thank you for letting, like, the whole neighborhood know that I don't have control over you and that you don't fucking listen to a goddamn thing I say. 
Like, you know, make me look like a shitty dog parent because you're an asshole who won't stay in the fucking fenced-in backyard. I mean, this is your first dog, isn't it? It is, and first and the last, let me tell you that. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> I will say I do feel safer with him in the house. Like, he has, you know, and I mean, he is. And that was the point, so. Yeah, that was the point. That was the point. Um, and, you know, he, he is a, a sweet boy and a, and a good boy, but God damn it. Like, <laughs> just. He's also an asshole. <laughs> he is also just he is just a dick. Oh my God. He is such a dick. But yeah, at least he doesn't do that anymore. At least now he just kind of like, you know, will hang around until I hear him like, you know, messing with the gate and then I'll yell for him and he'll come, he'll come slinking right back in, you know, like, Oh, what? I wasn't doing anything. You could probably fix it so he couldn't get out. Yeah. If I think, I think if I put one of those like carabiner latch things like through the little hole, then that would keep him like, you know, you can push that lever all you want, motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) That gate is staying latched. It's just a matter of like, uh, you know, actually finding one that fits through the hole and and doing it. And right. Right. You know, I I have these obstacles through my, you know, lack of uh, dopamine production that, you know, (laughs) makes things difficult. uh, it makes things really difficult. Things that, like, typical people might be like, why would you not just have done that yet? Why does it take you, like, six months to get this 10-minute thing accomplished? And it's like, okay. <laughs> Shit's hard. Fuck off. Shit is hard, okay? <laughs> There's just certain things where my brain is just like, nah, bro. Like, you can't do that. That's not a thing we're going to do today or any other day. I'm going <laughs> right. to shame you. I'm going to feel, you know, you're going to feel guilt and, you know, uh, over not doing said thing, but actually doing the thing, like, no. That's a negative. Well, speaking of people who have uh, weird things going on in their heads, remember those two little girls that stabbed that other little girl because they wanted to be Slenderman proxies. And I was like, going to say, was that the Slenderman case? Yeah. Yep, yep. So they're now 21 or 22, something like that. Oh, and, shit, and they got to get out, huh? Well, one of them's already out. The, let's see, her name is Anissa Weir. She, I believe, was released last year. No, I'm sorry, 2021 with GPS monitoring. So uh, she's, I don't know if she's still being GPS monitored, because that was three years ago at this point, but uh, she was already out. Uh, She, the other one is the one who is trying to get out now. Like in 2022, she wanted to be released, but then withdrew the request for some reason. I'm not really sure why. And she just recently resubmitted it. And the judge is, you know, they're uh, is putting together information or having people, uh, psychiatrists and shit, put together information to find out if she's okay to actually be released. And so uh, it happens in April. We'll find out in April whether she can go home or if she's going to be stuck in uh, the place that she's at. It has been seven years. Uh, they did let the other girl go. I mean, not go. She's still being watched, but she's not in a facility anymore. So, um, you know, maybe they were 14 when it happened. It was a long time ago. They were both found to be a little, uh, not, not quite right in the head, obviously, because they, you know, stabbed a girl 19 times and left her to die so they could be proxies for something that doesn't even fucking exist. Yes, but that is a little extreme. I mean, I was a pretty fucked not, up kid at 14, but time to Yes. Use. Yeah. Not they would not level. be the first 14-year-olds to kill people in the name of something that doesn't exist, however. I'm pretty sure that there is a historical precedent for that, uh, some of which we refer to as the Crusades. A um, variety of other things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, Morgan Geyser is the one that uh, is trying to uh, become released now. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, they just live life without stabbing any more people. Is, you know, yeah, I, I th- hope That would so. be I, ideal. I hope that the past seven years in psychiatric care has done something. Because yeah. if seven years in psychiatric care has done nothing, then there needs to be more research into psychiatry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because I mean, seven years of like that being basically all you fucking do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I hope I hope they're fine. 
Yeah, me too. I'm sure the girl who was stabbed 19 times has other thoughts about it, but... Oh, Jesus, I know. You know I mean, God. Jesus Christ. She was stabbed 19 times and then drug herself to a bike um, path where she was finally found. Fuck. Yeah. Pretty sure she probably has some long, uh, you know, lasting psychological effects from that happening. Yeah, hmm. yeah, I'm sure. Oh, well, the last thing I have here is, uh, well, the oldest fossil reptile that humans have found, uh, or that we found the, long, uh, the longest ago, rather, in the Alps, is uh, actually a forgery. Uh, what? It's a two, yeah, it's a 280-million-year-old fossil, and the reason it was such a big deal, it's, it's called uh, Tridentinosaurus Antiquus, and it was discovered in the Italian Alps in 1931. And we thought that, you know, humans, scientists, believed that this was early reptile evolution when it, it and the reason was because, uh, or the reason was so fancy is because they thought there was tissue. It looked like there was fossilized tissue. And so that helps with shape and color and all this kind of shit. Uh, it can help with how the inside works, if they know what the outside looks like, all kinds of stuff. But for some reason, maybe because it was so old and everyone just assumed it had been done, but they never really tested what this dark skin-like material that, you know, that they thought, or what they thought was fossilized skin. They never, no one ever, ever tested it, I guess. And so now they did, and they found it's just fucking paint. Oh, dear. Like, like a long time ago. Not like paint, but like a, a long time ago when people would paint like a stuff onto fossils to help preserve it. It still happens mm -hmm. sometimes today, but not nearly as much. And people just thought that was the fossilized skin. And it's not. And so a lot of research was based on that assumption. And so that, this kind of fucks a lot of shit up. Like anything that is assuming something from this fossil has to be taken into, like that has to be taken into consideration that they were working under false information. Mm -hmm. So. They're hoping it's not a complete loss. Uh, they believe that there is actually some skin bits in there. So they're going to see, but uh, basically that fucks that whole thing up entirely. That article was from Science Daily. The one about the uh, Slender Man was a Paranormality magazine. And the Foul Mouthed Parrots one is from NPR. All right. So why don't you close us out with this final article, Joanna? All right. Well, this is something uh, pretty local to where I am currently at. This is out of Kansas City, Missouri. And, uh, you know, if you, you know, just aren't a sports fan or you live under a rock or something, I mean, you might have <laughs> known that the Chiefs recently won the Super Bowl. Uh, I, I thought Taylor Swift won the Super Bowl. I heard she kicked the <laughs> winning... Um, uh, a home run. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the conspiracy that you know some she, people she are a song putting about out it. there. Mm -hmm. It was called "I Kicked the Winning Home Run." <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that the Chiefs kind of won it fair and square, but there's a lot of people out there that would argue otherwise. No, oh, they did know. I didn't actually. Watch it. Yeah, they won last year as well. And then uh, also one in uh, 2020. So it's, it's ah. been a good few years for those uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And this happened back in January. So right. So before, you know, they uh, were, you know, in Super Bowl glory yet again. Um, there was a group of friends who uh, got together at a friend's house to watch Kansas City Chiefs uh, play a football game. And two days following the game, so the game was on uh, Sunday, and then two days later on Tuesday, uh, three of them were found dead at this person's house, frozen to death. Uh, outside in the yard, like two were like... Missouri? Yes, in Kansas City, Missouri. Cold in Missouri. 
Yeah, and I had a look up the weather because this right before this happened, um, or actually right, right after this happened, we had like a major cold snap where it was fucking cold. Like, it was like, you know, in the negatives. There was one day where like zero degrees was like the high. I mean, it was... We had a like a really really cold snap, yeah. Um, but that was that was right after this. Now it was cold on the night that they would have uh, left the inside of the house, presumably to go home. Um, but then uh, they all froze to death in the <laughs> yard instead. Uh, two of them were like, yeah, two of them were in like the backyard and one was like, I don't know, I don't think they were out front, but like in the side or something like that. Like it was, it was really, really weird circumstances. And then the guy was like home the whole time and just like was allegedly completely unaware of the fact that uh, three of his friends were frozen to death uh, out in his yard. Yeah, and... it seems like, I mean... Yeah, one of the person's car, you know, the cars were still there, and I mean, we're, that might not be unusual, like, oh, they were drunk and they Ubered home or something and just left their cars parked on the street overnight. You know, I mean, I can see thinking that, but also, yeah, you didn't go outside this whole time, you didn't notice that <laughs> there's like three dead people yeah. in your yard. That seems and, quite, Yeah. It's it's just weird. The whole thing is weird. I mean, because these are men that are in their like mid to late thirties. These are like otherwise like young, healthy men who, um, yeah. And like I said, it was cold that night. I mean, the the temperatures were freezing. It was like thirty two degrees for the low. But I mean, certainly it would still take kind of a long time for you to die of hypothermia. And it's not uh, like they were out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, right? They were, they were just like they in were, this guy's I mean, house. there was like, it's like not like, like, hey man, it's cold out here. Like, hey, I thought you went home. Come on in. You know, yeah, like what the fuck? Yeah. Or like, oh hey, my car's right there on the street. I can like go inside my car and turn it on and warm up. Right. Like it's man, weird. That Uber driver was really late. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It is a straight up strange, and like there still are not a lot of answers. Uh, like six weeks later. <laughs> and just like, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, this article is out of people. It was like kind of the most recent one that I could, that I could find um, by uh, Rebecca Eisen. And uh, it says, Inside the mysterious deaths of three men found dead, hit, dead in friends' frozen yard, what we know so far. Ricky Johnson, David Harrington, and Clayton McGinney were found dead after watching the Chiefs game at a friend's house in Kansas City, Missouri on January 9th. Several questions remain unanswered after the three men were found dead in the backyard of their friend's home on January 9th. Ricky Johnson, David Harrington, and Clayton McGinney's bodies were discovered on January 9th, two days after they had gathered at their friend Jordan Willis's home to watch a Kansas City Chiefs game on January 7th. McGinney's fiance went looking for him and called the police when she saw him dead on Willis's back porch. <laughs> so fucking weird. You know yes. there's a dead guy on your back porch? Uh, yes. Huh? Who happens to be the person I'm supposed to marry? Oh, it's just <sighs> terrible. The Kansas City Police Department told people that after responding to her call, they co confirmed they found a dead body. Uh... A spokesperson for the KCPD said, quote, upon further investigation, officers located two other dead bodies in the backyard. What the fuck? Now, this guy Willis has come under a lot of scrutiny because the <laughs> yeah, whole no thing shit. is just weird. Like, how are you? I mean, he said he was like asleep the whole time, that he didn't like leave the house from Sunday to Tuesday morning when the bodies were discovered. And it's like, dude, how do you not know? Like, yeah. So he has retained an attorney, and the attorney's name is uh, John Paserno, and he told people in a statement that his client, client, quote, is unaware of how his friends died and is anxiously awaiting the results of the autopsy and toxicology report, end quote. While the KCPD said that there was no obvious signs of flower play observed at or near the crime scene and that it wasn't rule it wasn't ruled a homicide investigation. The deceased family suspected they weren't getting the full story. Johnson's brother, Jordan Price, told People, quote, nothing is adding up, but primarily Jordan's story does not add up whatsoever, end quote. 
However, weeks later on February 1st, early toxicology reports showed trace substances found in the three men's bodies per Fox 4, Kansas City. Uh, so I, I had to like, kind of skip through. I was like, what was found? Because I've been, I've been looking at this since January. I mean, everybody's been following this because it's just fucking it's weird right and there, crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> Apparently, the traces of substances that were initially found were fentanyl and cocaine. Oh, that'll do it. The fentanyl yeah, is except, probably just in the cocaine. Yeah, except it's just, it's, I mean, it's odd. I mean, they're talking about traces. So, I mean, that wasn't like, it wasn't such an overwhelming amount that they were like, yeah, this is definitely like what killed them or contributed to them just sitting outside and freezing to death. Right. It's... It's really, really strange. If it's trace amounts in there, it doesn't seem to make sense. And like, okay, maybe like one person uh, getting super fucked up and going outside and freezing to death because they're so fucked up that they passed out and, you know, can rouse themselves again. But all three. All three. All three. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, if you think about it, a bunch of bros are sitting around blowing lines of fucking coke laced with fentanyl, and three of them decide to go outside because they're way too hot, because they would possibly get hot, be sweating bullets or something, so they go outside and then, like, don't realize they're getting cold and just freeze to death. But I imagine that's going to take a lot, like, uh, not just trace amounts of coke and fentanyl. Yeah. It seems yeah, like that's it's really to weird. more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's... It's very, very strange. From the details of the night the three men died, uh, of the night the three men died, to the questions that still remain unanswered, here's everything to know about the mysterious deaths of Ricky Johnson, David Harrington, and Clayton McGinney. Johnson, Harrington, and McGinney were three close friends who often posted with each other on their social media before their deaths in early January 2024. Johnson's brother told people that he would see Johnson post with Harrington and McGinney, but he wasn't very familiar with Willis. That's the guy's, the, the, you know, the one who didn't die, who owned the house or <laughs> yeah. rented the house, who was renting the home where the men died. Price said that Johnson, who was 38 years old when he died, went to high school with Harrington and McGinney, who were 37 and 36, respectively, while Willis went to a nearby school. So, yeah, I mean, bros since high school, basically. Yeah. Grew up together. Yeah. Johnson ran his, fa ran his father's business, Johnson's Construction, in Kansas City, uh, and was an avid sports fan, always rooting for the Chiefs. He was also a father of three girls, 14, 9, and 4 years old, whom he loved spending time with, as his mother, Norma Chester, told people. She said, quote, he would have done anything for his girls. He didn't deserve this, end quote. Which is true. I mean, it's, fuck, it's pretty Probably tragic. Probably true. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, just fucking freezing to death in your friend's backyard is, a, is fucking shitty. Yeah, it's really shitty. I mean, even if the guy had nothing to do with it, I would feel so shitty. Oh, yeah. And I would always check my back. I'd be constantly checking my backyard. Yeah, I'm going to have some, like, like, PTSD there, over that shit. Someone, like, I can't, like, is there someone out there? Like, what the fuck? Right. Is someone else, like, dead in my yard now? Like, what the fuck? And, I mean, the thing that's weird is, like I said, it was, like, 32 degrees. So it was freezing. But, I mean, it would take a long time before you're actually going to, like, freeze to death in, like, when it's exactly freezing outside. It wasn't, like, one know. of those nights that we had subsequently uh, over the next several days where it was, like, I mean, it was, like, okay, you could freeze to death, you know, in an hour or two being outside. Like, that would make much more sense if they were fucked up and all went outside and that they all froze to death. Because it just seems like it wouldn't take a whole lot. You, know, it, you, you could freeze to death pretty quick in that um, cold of weather. But this, I mean, it would have taken a, a while. I mean, you, couldn't, you can become hypothermic at 70 degrees. I guess. It's just I mean, odd, your body's at, what, 98 point something degrees? And so when you start to do, when your body 6. temperature drops below that, that's when you become hypothermic. Mm -hmm. So just because it's only, only 32 degrees, it's only freezing doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take that long for you to be i mean especially i don't know how they were dressed i mean right if they went out in like you know tank tops and shorts it's going to take well the it. thing is is that the this guy willis uh says that jordan willis says that they had they were leaving for the night like or that he had gone up to bed and they were still there and we're going to leave i mean they were close enough friends to where it wasn't like it was like well i'm going to you know, go pass out now, and you guys can yeah, just do whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, 
So he thought they had just left to go home. So <clears throat> I don't know. It's interesting, like, if they had, like, coats and personal effects, uh, it would be weird for them to have left them behind in the house. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that, that should have, have like, strange. triggered some, like, uh, alarms uh, with, with Jordan Willis, you would think, that where it's like, uh, why why are the cars still here? Why, why is everyone's coat still, like, thrown over the couch? Right. I don't know. I don't know. So, but I don't know. It, it doesn't say what state of dress that they were in when their bodies were discovered. So, Jesus Christ. It's it's unknown. It's just it's incredibly strange. It's incredibly <laughs> yeah. strange. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, McGinney's family echoed similar senten- sentiments with his cousin Caleb McGinney calling him a good person in an interview with Fox affiliate WDAF. Quote, just the thought of him dying and them sitting outside in the cold for two days, it's extremely devastating. The whole family is messed up. He was such a good person, end quote. Uh, Per a GoFundMe started on behalf of April April McGinney's fiance, the victim was a subcontractor for a small construction company. In an interview with the Kansas City Star, another cousin explained that McGinney was on a good path turning his life around after a few issues with traffic violations and child support. Jennifer Marquez, Harrington's mother, told WDF that the call informing her of her son's death was, quote, the most devastating moment of her life. It's a huge loss. He's everything. He's a brother. He has a sister, Carmen, a brother, Sebastian. They're missing him, and they are brokenhearted. They will never see their brother again, end quote. On the night of January 7th, the three friends went over to Willis's rented house in Kansas City to watch the Chiefs play. While initial reports stated that it was just the four of them present in the home, WDAF later learned that a fifth friend was there that night but left earlier in the evening. The exact timeline of the events that followed remains unclear. In a statement to People, Paserno, the lawyer for Willis, claimed that his client last saw the men when they left his house and, went, and he went to bed. Quote, he had no knowledge that they remained in his backyard, end quote, the attorney added. Via an email to people, Paserno acknowledged WDAF's report that there was a fifth man at the house, but said that he left maybe an hour or two before the other three, and added that Jordan is not exactly sure of that time period. (laughs) (laughs) So... Uh, since then, though, Paserno has said that Willis went to sleep before the three men left. So it was kind of unclear, like, did they actually, did you, you know, did they leave, but when he was still awake and he, like, you know, thought they were leaving for the night or did he go to bed already and then, you know, just assumed when he next woke up and they weren't there that they had, you know, left, you know, at some point after he had gone to bed. It's unknown, but this this fifth guy that was over there uh, does say that everybody was still awake while uh, when he left the premises and that they were all watching Jeopardy. Sounds Which like is a, weird. To, I mean, that's the weirdest part. Of, one of the weirder parts of the story is like they're watching <laughs> Jeopardy, huh? Like, that's, like huh. you know. All right, guys. <laughs> My guess, though, is that Jeopardy came on after the Chiefs game. You know, yeah, like you, yeah. you watched a bunch of football and then you're just sitting there talking and bullshitting and just whatever comes on after the football game is on. So yeah, that would yeah. be my best guess because, I don't know, it just doesn't really track for me. Like, okay, and then they were watching Jeopardy and they all had their notepads out and they were like really into it. <laughs> <laughs> that will take weird, unusual guests for 200, please. Yeah, no shit. Whoever the fuck is hosting Jeopardy now since Alec Trebek died, I think, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I don't know who who it is. I can't remember his name. It's some guy. Yeah, but anyways, yeah, I'm assuming that's why Jeopardy was on. It just it just kind of was it like Jeopardy, happened, yeah. huh? That was yeah, just, just on next, yeah. Yeah, that was on next after the Chiefs game. So, yeah, uh, article just goes on to say, uh, you know, when he would have people over at his house, yes, sometimes it's people, they get tired. This is the attorney speaking on behalf of his client. They're people that are very close to you and you feel comfortable going to bed and allowing them to leave when they want to leave, he said. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I've got, you know, tons of friends where I just feel like, I'm going to bed now. You guys do whatever, you know. Yeah, 100%. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think there's anything unusual, really, about that part of the story. The part of the story is, like, you know, what the fuck was going on that they all, like, went out to your backyard and then fucking froze to death. Froze to death, yeah. 
you know, without uh, trying to get back in the house or getting into their, you know, any one of their cars. Any of the, any of the many I mean, the and things they could have done besides freeze to death. Yes, yes. Any, I mean, and if it was like two of them like in bad shape, why, why didn't one of them call and get help? I mean, it's just so weird. All three of them just yeah, it's sat, basically crazy. sat out in the yard until they were dead that from seems, cold. Yeah. Like, what the fucking fuck? Seems like there's something something wrong with that. Yeah. So uh, it goes on to say that yeah, the toxicology reports found traces of substances in the men's systems, the cocaine and fentanyl. It doesn't say say though, like you know, if all three of them had cocaine and fentanyl in their system, and it's and it's pretty specific with the you know, uh, quantitative term of traces. So not anything right. so overwhelming that. Uh, it would explain the circumstances of their deaths. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just really, really weird. Yeah. Two of the victims' cars were found parked on the street. And that, you know, yeah, nobody, nobody really knows still what happened. And the investigation is ongoing uh, according to Piserno, um all jordan willis wants is answers because he's known them for over 20 years they're his friends he's deeply hurt by their passing yeah, but no but like yeah um but the family members are you know tending to be a little bit more like you know more than what you're saying they they right. think that maybe he has answers that he's not being very uh, forthcoming about um Family members did knock on Willis's doors over the course of the two days before the bodies were discovered, and he claimed to have not heard them. So he didn't answer the door for like you know a couple of days because like people did come over there and were like, That's "Oh hey, like weird." Yeah, and he didn't respond to like text messages and Facebook messages that uh, family members also sent him, wanting to know the whereabouts of their loved ones. Right, and he claimed it was you know because he slept with the earbuds in and he didn't hear them. Um, yeah, it was basically not until the police knocked at his door and then he kind of comes out and like, you know, one person said he kind of came out with like, you know, in a bathrobe, just kind of like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, just kind of like, I don't know, like it was just kind of a weird. Like, how can I help you? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Fucking weird. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, just, just it's, it is, it was and is, continues to be like a very uh, odd set of circumstances to say the least. But yeah, essentially. Uh, he is saying that he wants answers just as much as anybody else does. The family is saying, you know something that you're not telling us. And uh, medically, so far, uh, all the investigations are kind of like leading to not anything definitive that can explain why the fuck these three men uh, just froze to death in the backyard. I don't know. <laughs> I think there's just something really weird about this. Oh, yeah. I mean, my personal there's opinion. There's no reason to just die unless you have to really I mean, yeah yeah i mean it's like it's just odd it's really really odd all three of them well i'm sure something will eventually uh come out of it mm -hmm. i mean you live in the area so you'll be hearing about it uh, i'm sure yeah yeah it's just it's i mean it almost you know it makes me think about that one, uh, the one in the Ural Mountains. Yeah, the, the Diatlov uh, Pass. Yeah, the Diatlov Pass. You know how some of them like kind of inexplicably uh, took off their clothes and just froze to death outside yeah, rather than yeah. go back to the tent, you know, go back and, you know, or, you know, try to seek shelter or make a fire or do something to save themselves. For whatever reason, they sat out there and froze to death. Yeah, and it he's... almost kind of, you know, this this case has kind of a the same feel to it. It's just like, what the fucking fuck? Yeah, that's super fucking weird. Yeah, and I mean, again, if it was just one of them that happened to do that, it's like, okay, yeah, sometimes you get fucked up and you end up out in the cold and you die. It's like people getting fucked up and drowning in their bathtub. I mean, right, shit like right. that happens, but but all three would have to like kind of like lose consciousness and like pass one. out at the same exact time outside in the backyard that that's very odd i mean everyone process i mean if it was due to some like large amount of some substance that they haven't yet found or haven't disclosed to the public that they've found i mean 
I mean, for if everything like kind of affects everybody else differently. So the fact that it would like hit everyone at the, the kind of the exact same time where everyone's like passing out right. outside at the exact same time and um, being in such a state of unconsciousness that they never uh, they just sit out there until they die of hypothermia. That's just very strange. Yeah. That's well, very one is weird a, to me. One is an accident and like yeah. two would be a coincidence, but three, that's kind yeah. of a pattern. It is, and it's a very uh, weird and unusual pattern. Like, yes. Yes, what is. the fucking fuck happened? And the fact that the guy was just kind of, like, oblivious. I mean, you don't go at all in your, I mean, two days? Like, I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, I get it. It's fucking cold out. Like, I avoid going outside, too. Yeah, like, but no text most messages, of the time, none but... of your... Facebook yeah, I mean, the fact that you're getting calls, messages, okay, like, yeah, your friend's cars door. are parked on the street, people are clearly saying, like, I don't know where they are, you don't go and, ch you know. Yeah, just nothing. Yeah. Just nothing, you don't just, like, take a quick look out back or see if there's, like, some kind of clue as to where your friends are because, like, oh, well, it just so happens all three of them are sitting dead in your backyard. Yeah, no shit. Uh, yeah, it's it's strange. It's it's very very weird. So I will I will keep you guys updated as yeah, things keep us develop posted on that because craziness. Yeah, that's a that's a whole lot of strange going on there. All right. Well, it sounds like that's about all we have for you guys. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, we will. We're glad to be back, and we hope we that you're so glad, glad that back. that we're back too, because you know that's lovely. Um, you can take a look at our Patreon, although I don't even I haven't looked at it for a long time, so it's probably like suspended or something, uh, just because we haven't released on it for a long time. Doing so things, anything. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, so we'll try and we'll try and rectify we'll, that situation. We'll get everything all sorted. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just for for the time being, just go ahead and listen. Yeah, just keep on listening, and yeah. that's all we can ask for. <laughs> and we'll talk to you next time. And stay strange.